Welcome to the busy Latter-day Saint, where righteous desires and living life come together. Here, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints discuss their challenges and successes in studying the scriptures. I'm your host, Richard Bernard. Before we hear from our guest, I encourage you to subscribe to this podcast and leave comments. This will help the podcast in reaching a larger audience. Also, invite your friends to listen. Information on how to reach me and a link to my website are in the show notes. The music for this program is by Marvin Goldstein and used with his permission. And now, today's interview. Well, welcome, Rob. How are you this morning? I'm pretty well. Thank you for having me. How are you? Well, I'm doing well, but I want to especially thank you um, for the listening audience. Uh, You're on vacation, and um, uh, you agreed to be... uh, interviewed today or actually yesterday at 6 30 in the morning we had uh, technological problems and so you were kind enough to get up again uh, today and it's uh, 6 30 in the morning again so i want to thank you for that um, uh, microsoft decided to pull something on me that i wasn't expecting and anyway i got it solved and we're up and running so i'd like to start with just t- tell me about yourself. Now, I have to tell everyone, um, I think I know you pretty well. <laughs> um, yes. You, you are my son-in-law. And um, when I ask you to tell about yourself, I'm doing that for the audience. So go ahead and just tell the audience something about yourself. Okay. I grew up in Southern California and uh, grew up in the church. Both my parents were uh, converts to the church and um, yeah, I, so I grew up in Southern California and uh, went to BYU for a year and then served in the Hungary Budapest mission and returned and a year later married my high school sweetheart and we've been married for 23 years now. We have three wonderful boys and uh, we moved after a year after getting married we moved to utah and uh, finished byu Uh, my desire was to become a seminary teacher and that was not meant to be and so after college uh, after graduating from byu i got hired at a a worldwide package delivery company i don't know if i should say or not but uh, (laughs) i've been doing that uh, for 20 years now Wow. Yeah, I think mentioning UPS is a good thing, since I had okay. some packages yesterday that was supposed to be delivered by <laughs> FedEx and never showed up. <laughs> so, All right. And of course, our listeners are known that I, when I first met Rob, uh, he somewhere along the line, he told me they never use the F word in his house. And of <laughs> course, by that, he meant he meant FedEx. So anyway, I've got great respect for you, and um, I didn't know that, I guess I thought I knew about you, but I thought you were, um, you wanted to be a sportscaster. Was that in there somewhere? Oh, well, that was that was my field of study at BYU, um, studied broadcast journalism, and yeah, that was the original plan, and then the more I got into it, the less I liked it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and... Yeah, so, but I didn't want to change majors and kind of start all over again. And so I was, I I felt like the seminary route was the route to go. Um, But uh, ultimately, I didn't get hired. Um, Went went as far as you could before, you know, getting hired. And and they said, well, not not so much. (laughs) (laughs) You know, yes, uh, Jared, our son, um, wanted to be a seminary teacher and had the same problem. Evidently, The hiring process, I've been told, is quite interesting, and I don't know what makes a decision between one becoming a seminary teacher and not, because the people I've known that have gone in the program and have not um, been hired, I would have hired them. (laughs) So I I think they're all, you know... uh, uh, good men and um, and a t- strong testimony in the gospel, but I guess there's something that they look for, and I don't know what that is. You talked about that in the broadcasting, you liked it less. What was it you didn't like about uh, the major as you got into it? Well, having grown up in Southern California, I was a big Dodgers fan and a Lakers fan, and I just 
thought that, oh man, what a what a great thing it would be to, you know, what a, what a cool job to be a the Dodgers announcer or something. Yes. And I I learned as I got into it that you don't go from BYU graduate to Dodgers announcer. There's a big long oh, process that. Oh, oh you know, really? You start with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's see who, who who was the sportscaster at that time that was had the job for a hundred years. Yeah, Vin Scully. Vin, Vin Scully, yeah. Uh, uh, you had high aims yeah, to kick him out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's out now, but somebody beat me to it. But no, yeah. he, he only he only is out because uh, he uh, just he, he still got a great voice and he's still yeah. still alive. But you know, you get to get to be about ninety, and it uh, gets to be more difficult. Yeah, <laughs> and you use the past tense of being a Dodger fan, but um, that's not true. Oh well, sorry. I, I, I grew up. Yes, I, I, I'm still a Dodgers <laughs> fan. Don't care so much about basketball anymore. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually wearing a Dodgers shirt right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I can I can see the logo on there. I think right now what I'd like to get into um, before actually before we get into the scriptures, um, you belong to an organization that I think is great. And uh, actually, you're a mentor in that organization, and I think people should know about it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that organization? Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, um, in addition to my day job, I, uh, for two years now, approximately, I've been uh, mentoring for a, uh, a group called, uh, or an organization called Life Changing Services, and they're, they're based in Utah, but they help um, men and young men, all people actually, uh, who might uh, have pornography addiction. Um, but they also um, teach uh, a, a general self-mastery class for, for any issue that uh, anyone might, might want to work on. Um, and they also help you know, with, with trauma recovery for, for family members of, of those who have uh, experienced pornography addiction. And so two years or so that I've mentored uh, men and young men um, going, going through pornography addiction and also teach that, that self-mastery class, which, which I went through myself. And it was, uh, it was helpful to me for, for, you know, I, I found myself uh, in life making a lot of the same mistakes over and over again, especially in regards to, you know, <laughs> being a husband and, <laughs> and, uh, taking good care of things uh, at home. You know, I, I, gosh, <laughs> I, I love my, my wife very much. We love each other very much. And, and we, uh, we, but we've had our struggles over the years for sure. Um, and so anyway, it's been very rewarding to be able to, to help people in their, in their journeys, uh, different kinds of journeys, trying to overcome, you know, not necessarily addiction, but just, just any kinds of struggles. And uh, and then recently, um, me and, and a couple others, uh, a couple other friends in the organization, we started a, a podcast called Father to Fight, and we uh, we discuss issues regards to with regards to fathering and and how we can step up as as fathers in our families, and um, so uh, we it's been it's been a fun you know we've only got uh, a few episodes done now but we're just starting out and so we're we're hoping to be able to to slowly or quickly, if it works out that way, build an army of fathers who are dedicated to helping their families and training them in, in the gospel and, and uh, helping our children and our families navigate this crazy world of ours. Well, I th certainly think it's a great organization. In fact, I've set it up for you to talk to my bishop, because I know in our ward, um, I Currently, I'm serving as the Elders Quorum President, which I keep saying I thought that was a young man's uh, calling. But um, <clears throat> anyway, I become aware that we've got several people in our ward. And from what I'm hearing, it seems to be very common. Uh, there's In each ward, bishops are battling people who are fighting pornography. And I think to have an organization that can help with that, I think, is a great thing. And, and by the way, for our listeners, I've listen to Rob's podcast. In fact, I listen to it each week, and um, I think they, they're doing an excellent job. They're talking about principles. At least that's what the subject's been for the last few weeks, and I, I think it's a, a great podcast. Well, Rob, how do you start your day as far as um, preparing your day? 
ideally, I uh, soon after waking up, I I spend time in prayer and and I I try to study my scriptures in the morning. You know, every every morning can be a little different, but um, I feel like the the sooner in the day that I can make that connection with Heavenly Father and 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 read and study His Word, it really helps the flow of my day. It helps it helps me to feel more peace and and better able to handle the the challenges and, and stresses and craziness that tend to come with each day. <laughs> okay. Well, I think it's a great way to start the day. Now, as far as scripture study, what exactly is your approach, or does it vary from day to day? Yeah, it can vary from day to day, but generally, and honestly, I I try and switch it up a little bit, because, you know, sometimes when you are been studying the scriptures all throughout your life, things, you know, there's there's a tendency or the possibility of things becoming a little mundane or, you know, it can be hard to focus sometimes when you have, you know, read the Book of Mormon many, many times and, and it's like, okay, well, I know this, you know, the brain can, can uh, fall into that trap. So I, I try and switch things up uh, as far as, you know, sometimes I will study by uh, like going through the topical guide uh, with President Nelson's challenge, is you know he uh, a while back he challenged the young adults to to go through the uh, topical guide and and study and mark all the, the references that refer to the Savior, and um, there, so sometimes I'll do that, and sometimes uh, one thing that I've done in the past, which is really cool, um, a couple of years ago. Uh, I read Elder Bed- one of Elder Bednar's books. I believe it was his second book, which I can't remember the title of right now. But anyway, there's a video that came along with it, and um, there was a suggestion. Uh, he, had, he had a question and answer session. There's a suggestion he made um, after someone asked a question about trying to get answers through the Book of Mormon. He he suggested that you buy a, one of the inexpensive copies of the Book of Mormon, and you study it with that particular question in mind and, you know, go through it and, and, you know, ponder and mark any verses that, that relate to answering that question. And he said, of course, if you do this throughout your life, you'll have uh, a good library of copies of the Book of Mormon, um, you know, with, with, that you've studied for specific answers to specific questions. And so I've, I've done that before. Um, one and a half times or so, uh, <laughs> um, but that, that that's very rewarding. I always try to include something of the Book of Mormon in my studies because I love President Nelson's promise that that if you study the Book of Mormon every day, you'll make better decisions every day. And I definitely need to make good decisions every day, so I, I always try and include at least some of the Book of Mormon if I'm not studying the Book of Mormon completely for that whole time. I agree with that promise. And by the way, Elder Bednar's book, he wrote a trilogy that you were speaking about. And I think the second one was Power to Become, or maybe that was the third. Okay. Anyway, there is a trilogy, and I'll put that in the uh, the notes so that people have access to that. But I've always, I've suggested to everyone <laughs> for ever since those books came out uh, to read all three of them. There are only four chapters each, each book. But uh, yeah, the videos in there are great, and um, uh, they, I probably have read each of those books four or five times. I just keep going back to them because it's almost like the scriptures. Every time I read it, I go, I don't remember him saying that before, <laughs> but it's here in it's, but it's here in print, so he must have. But um, yeah, those are those are great books. In fact, uh, through Desert Books, you can get the uh, the whole collection, all three of them. So, and. <clears throat> I, uh, now, did you get a hard copy or did you get a digital copy of the book? I think with the first two books, I got the digital copy, but then the, the third one, I got the hard copy. Okay. Yeah, I, I like the digital copy because the videos are right there in the book. <laughs> you don't have to yeah. have a, a fact. Do people still get CDs? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> yeah, they I, might just send it with the link. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure young people today, if we gave them a CD, if they'd be sure to know what to exactly do with it. Um, in fact, <laughs> I, I know this is off the point, but I read a, a study yesterday 
um, some parents were doing and the the common sign that people make this has nothing to do with sign language but just the common sign people make to show that they're on the phone you know with the extended phone, uh, thumb and pinky up there they're finding mm -hmm. that young kids uh, four or five have no idea what that means in mm. fact in <laughs> fact when these this was done by some parents when parents start asking their children how they would show that somebody's on the phone it's a flat palm against the ear <laughs> and so they, they, they found, wow. and, and so other parents started asking their children, and they all had the same problem. They didn't know what that uh, extended uh, thumb and pinky was. And so, <laughs> because of technology changing so much, it's, it's interesting that probably over time, um, that flat palm against the face is going to probably be the sign for being on the call. The other thing they discovered is the children didn't know what they were talking about when they said to hang up. Oh. <laughs> Man, so we could so, we could spend a long time talking about all this change. Yes. <laughs> so getting back on topic and, and and the scriptures, I guess the question I also have here is now you served a mission and um obviously studying the scriptures as a missionary is much different than studying as an individual who's in what I call real life. But do you remember how long you were able to keep that going as far as what I've seen with missionaries is they try to keep it going when they come back, but it's difficult. And do you, do you remember having that, that, that problem? You know, I, for a long time, I've, I've had a great love for the scriptures. And so certainly being in real life, as you say, it's hard to maintain that, that missionary study habit as far as I think it's an hour a day by yourself and then an hour a day with your companion. At least that's that's how I remember it for myself. So yeah, it's it's hard to, to keep that going, but but as far as some kind of scripture study habit, I've I've kept up pretty well. I mean I'm not perfect by any means and there are days when I don't study the scriptures. Um, just depending on, you know yeah, a lot of things. But anyway, um they've always been important to me and, and you know, we the uh for several months now, the the uh, topic of of hear him has has been you know discussed a lot, and you know how do you hear him, and and for me that's I think how I hear the Savior the most and the Heavenly Father mo the most is through the Scriptures. So it's important for me to to be able to study them so that I can hear their voice and, and stay close to them. Um, so you know I I think that 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 love of and, and appreciation for the scriptures came as a teenager because I, uh, starting seminary, I tried to, you know, do the, the reading assignments and things. And, and I had an experience uh, with scripture study, um, my freshman year in high school where, you know, as you, you hear people talk about how they open the scriptures and, and, uh, or, you know, and then something pops out and answers their, their question. And, and for me, you know, that was being that the first time that happened where I was studying the scriptures and, and something that I was struggling with, the answer was right there. You know, that that love for the scriptures began to, to develop. And, and so I, I really do feel like a lot of times my prayers are answered through scripture study, whether it be the actual verse itself that I study or, you know, impressions I get while studying. Well, when you get those impressions, what do you do? Do you record them? What exactly do you do when you get something like that? Yeah, I, I certainly try to. Um, that's something that I'm not as good at. But but I do know that, that it's a lot easier to remember <laughs> when you do record them. Um, and, and it makes it much more meaningful. And I remember a promise from from Elder Richard G. Scott too, where he talked about that uh, you know when, when you when you record them, it shows Heavenly Father that that you value the information He's giving you, and He can it's, it's a, a sign that He can trust you with more information. And so I I do try and record them. Um, my system for recording is um a work in progress as far as you know sometimes for a long time it was it was notebooks maybe spiral notebooks and things um you know more recently it's on my phone and um and even more recently um 
getting into the uh, Gospel Library app. And you know, thanks to you and and you're showing me that uh, it's such a great tool for for doing that. Um, I've I've been trying to use that more and more because yeah, it is. Uh, I, I think it is important to be able to to keep it in in one place where you not you're not forgetting where where you wrote it down and it's uh, difficult to lose that kind of thing. Yes, um, I use the Day One um, app, which is only available for Apple users. Um, no, I'm sorry. It, it it recently, well, within the last year, came out also for Android users. Um, <clears throat> But I love the Day One app. Of course, that's where I record a, a daily journal, and then I can have numerous journals within that, that app, and I have one for Revelation and one for Scripture study. I tend to use my notes in the Gospel Library for uh, information that might pertain, well, does pertain to that particular verse or chapter or something. And so it just goes to show that there's different ways to do this. I know um, someone in a class that I have for senior missionaries, uh, this was a few years ago, but he said, you know, I use my notes to um, in the gospel library for meeting notes in the church. And so he goes to the notebook section and actually has a whole section of uh, meeting notes. So, but yes, I, it, it's important regardless of how we do it and where we record them is to record them. And you're correct that... Um, as we record them, we, we do receive more information. And when I worked with the missionaries at the MTC, that was something that uh, I really worked uh, on with them uh, to, to record what's, what's going on. Because as you pointed out, the, 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 the feelings, the revelation, whatever you want to call it, um, not very often has anything to do with the scripture we're reading. And Elder Packer has said that um, the scriptures are simply the door or the key to revelation. And so once we get in that, that spirit, then revelation can come. Although I've discovered it doesn't come all the time. Um, right. I, don't, I don't know if you've had that experience. Maybe you're different every time you read the scriptures, the heavens open up and uh, you have a paragraph of revelation, but uh, that doesn't happen with me. Uh, it, I've often wondered what makes the difference, but um, anyway, it, it, it appears, at least for me, it doesn't come uh, come that often. Um, you, you mentioned the various ways that uh, you approach the scriptures. Um, do you do you find that sometimes? You, well, let me back up here a little bit. I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. Um, <clears throat> You mentioned earlier that you've read the Book of Mormon so many times, and and I'm like you. The minute I, in fact, I'm in Moroni now, Moroni chapter seven in my study. Um, when I get to Moroni ten, that's the last chapter, right? Moroni ten. Um, I'll go back to. I will go back to the beginning, and uh, start all over again. <clears throat> and so, yes, you get to some points that you go, wow, what else can I get from this? And I think the answer is is to listen uh, more to the Spirit. And for example, I, I've been in Moroni 7 probably for four or five days. Um, I, I've really questioned what is faith and exactly hope and charity. And so I've gone back and um, looked at the Hebrew for... Um, for charity, which, by the way, doesn't actually exist in the Old Testament, I found out. Uh, the uh, translators of the Old Testament um, tend to use the Hebrew word uh, that we might say for charity as love, and they just kind of leave it at that. Um, and also mercy, they also translate it as mercy. So anyway, um, I, I I've been studying just trying to figure this out. In fact, I've even put it on a mind map. And so as an opening to what I'm doing in that way, is there anything different that you do from time to time? Um, uh, do you tend to stay in a chapter for a while or a verse? Or does maybe a verse uh, just kind of ring true to you? And of course, now you do um, the important work of getting packages to the uh, people and keep the economy going here. And of course, you're by yourself all day. Um, and so is sometimes the scripture stick with you for a few days or do you have these experiences? 
Yeah, I I mean, for me, the most meaningful scripture studies many times have been when the whole time I'll spend it with with just one verse or, you know, maybe just a couple verses because you're trying to dissect it and ponder it and really, you know, let it sink into into your heart. Well, I should say me, not your. Uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so, so there are times when when I'll, I'll go back to the same verse or set of verses for a couple of days in a row to really let it sink in. Yeah. You know, it, and that's the kind of, that's the thing too, is sometimes, yeah, if I am reading, reading chronologically, I'll, uh, you know, there's a verse that will stick out. And so then from there I'll go off and, you know, whether it be a word or a concept, you know, look at the footnotes, try and find the original meaning of the word. I, I love the, uh, the etymology of words and where they originate from to try and get the, the true original meaning and what it, what it uh, stands for and things. So, so yeah, that, that happens for sure. And another funny thing that, that I, that happens to me a lot of times with scripture study is no matter how long I decide to set um, for my scripture study time, currently my, my scripture study goal is, is 15 minutes in the scriptures and then listening to a conference talk at, at some point during the day. Um, but no matter how long I've, I've set aside for scripture study time, it tends to happen where towards the very end, you know, as it's getting close to the end of that time, that's when things really start to roll. And so it's, it can be hard to, you know, to stick to that 15 minutes as it were, because you, that's when things have started to open up and it's like, Oh, I want to make sure I get this written down or I want to look a little more into it. Um, so that, that's an interesting thing that happens to me a lot as well. Yes. Um, Interesting about time, uh, I've mentioned it in my book, but um, I did extensive research on the general authorities and their talks about how long we should study the scriptures, and none of them give a time, except uh, one from uh, President Benson, who was quoting somebody else, I believe. Um, anyway, he said uh, 30 minutes was seemed to be a good amount of time. Um, but I found, and I, years ago I did a survey of people, it was a small survey, but I found that people um, quite often feel that they're just not studying the scriptures enough, even though some of them said they were studying 45 minutes to an hour a day. And I, I, I think we have a tendency, and part of the reason for this podcast is we have a tendency to think that, you know, if we're not studying the scriptures an hour or two hours a day, and our minds are constantly on the Savior, that we're somehow not doing things right. And um, I know for me lately it's been, how can I spend more time pondering the scriptures, not necessarily in front of them, and also how can I spend more of my thought process during the day focused on the Savior? And I'm finding it very difficult because my mind can easily get into, okay, I've got to edit this podcast or I've got to get ready for the class I teach for the missionaries and and so I'm still struggling to figure out how to do that. But uh, no, you're absolutely right. After 10 minutes or 15 minutes, uh, the ideas start coming and it's hard to stop, but then you've got a job to get to. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I, I, I yeah, don't think you can show up and, uh, and family and I don't think you can show up late to your, your work and say, well, I got carried away in the scriptures for an hour and I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. They might they might say, well, if you enjoy reading the scriptures so much, we'll just let you read it full time. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you don't want that to happen. Yes. Sure. So so we do have these challenges. Well, I think we're getting near the end of our time here, and I I always ask um, those that I do speak with um, if they would mind sharing their testimony. So would you mind sharing your testimony? And we'll we'll end with that. And um, I won't say any more after you're done. Okay. Well, I'd be happy to. I, as I said, for me, my conversion to the gospel and, and love for the gospel and, and the Savior and Heavenly Father um, started fairly early. You know, fortunate to to have grown up as a member of the church and and uh, not have to look far for for the truth. But of course, I had to seek it out for myself, and and my testimony, again, really did come through studying the scriptures and and, and the uh, 
the feelings and impressions that came through that. You know, like when I for, when I made my first study of the Book of Mormon uh, as a teenager, it only took me until Second Nephi two to to know that yes, this is true, and I'm I'm grateful for that knowledge. It has it has helped carry me through through a lot of difficult challenges in life, knowing that the Savior is there, knowing the Heavenly Father is there, listening, always ready and willing to to reach out and 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 extend tender mercies. Uh, it's it's just so comforting. I I love the Savior. I'm grateful for his atonement and I'm so grateful for for, for me the atonement means second chances and third chances and 86 chances and uh, I as much as I <laughs> try not to make the same mistake over and over again it does it does happen from time to time and I know that that as I try and do better try and change try and stay close to to what is right and what is true Heavenly Father and the Savior reach out and and forgive and um, I am so grateful for that knowledge. I, I, I know President Nelson is, is our prophet today, and that uh, that line has been unbroken from, from Joseph Smith to him. Um, I received a very distinct impression. It was, uh, it was uh, even, well, it was a situation at work. Uh, things were chaotic, but uh, that, that first uh, press conference that uh, President Nelson gave uh, with with all the apostles at the temple um, introducing the new first presidency I was watching that press conference uh, while I had some downtime at work things were going on around and it was a little chaotic but but the spirit cut through all that and testified to me that he's a prophet and and I'm grateful for that knowledge and uh, so I think that's uh, kind of kind of the essence of, of my testimony I, I know the gospel's true